Chapter 82 The Sindhu King News of Arjuna's oath reached the enemy. The spies informed Duryodhana's friends that Arjuna, having learnt that Jaitrada was the cause of Abhimanyu's death, had vowed to kill the Sindhu king before sunset next day. Vridhakshatra, uh, the illustrious king of the Sindhus, was blessed with a son who was named Jaitrada. At the time of the birth of the prince, a voice was heard to say, This prince will attain great glory and he will attain the happy regions above, slain in battle, one who among the warriors of all ages ranks among the most illustrious will in the field of battle sever his head from the body. All living beings must die, but hardly any, however wise or brave, welcome it. Vridhakshatra was grieved to hear the voice declare his son's end. In his disturbed state of mind, he uttered a curse. He who shall cause my son's head to roll down on the ground shall have his head burst at that very moment into fragments. Jaitrada grew up and when he reached manhood, Vridhakshatra handed over the care of the state to the prince. He retired to the forest where he spent the evening of his days in austerities in an ashrama near the plain, which afterwards became the Kurukshetra field of battle. When Jaitrada came to know about Arjuna's vow, he remembered the prediction about his death and feared his end was near. I do not want to be in this battle any longer. Let me go back to my country, he said to Duryodhana. Do not fear, Saindava, replied Duryodhana. Here are all these veterans and warriors who will stand between you and danger. Karna, Chitrasena, Vivimsati, Burishravas, Salya, Vrishasena, Purumitra, Jaya, Boja, Kamboja, Sudakshina, Satyavrata, Vikarna, Durmuka, Dushasana, Shubahu, Kalinga and Avanti princess Drona, Drona's illustrious son and Shakuni, all these warriors and I myself are here and you cannot be in danger. The whole of my army will have but one task today, to defend you against Arjuna. You should not leave us now. Jayatrada agreed to remain. He went to Drona and said to him, Master, you taught me and Arjuna and you know us both well. What is your appraisal of us two? Son, I discharged my duties as teacher and dealt with you both impartially. The instruction was the same to you and to Arjuna. But Arjuna excels because of his superior discipline and his own practice. But you need not be discouraged by this. You will be placed behind a strong force that Arjuna cannot easily pierce. Fight according to the tradition of your ancestors. Death comes to us all, cowards as well as brave men. And the warrior dying in battle attains with ease the happy regions which others only attain with great difficulty. Discard fear and fight. Drona, having spoken thus to Jaitrada, proceeded to marshal the forces for the next day. Twelve miles to the rear of the main army, Jaitrada and his detachment were placed in a strongly guarded position. Burishravas, Karna, Ashwatthama, Shalya, Vrishasena and Kripa were there with all their forces. Between them and the Pandava army, Dronachari arrayed the main Kaurava forces in circular formation. Durmarshana's army was beaten. Like clouds driven by a gale, the Kaurava forces were scattered and fled in all directions. When Dushasana saw this, his anger rose. Leading a huge force of elephants, he surrounded Arjuna. Dushasana was a very wicked man, but he was very brave also. He fought Arjuna fiercely and the field was strewn with the dead. Finally, he withdrew defeated and went back to join Drona's forces. Savya Sachi's uh, uh, car swiftly proceeded forward and passed Drona. Illustrious one, grieving for my son, I have come to wreak vengeance on the Sindhu king. I crave your blessings and the fulfillment of my vow, said Arjuna to the Acharya. The Acharya smiled and said, Arjuna, you must fa first fight and defeat me before you can reach Jaitrata. 
saying this drona discharged a shower of arrows on arjuna's car partha also replied with his arrows but these the acharya parried with ease and sent flaming shafts that hit krishna and arjuna the pandava then decided to cut drona's bow and bent his gandiva for that purpose even as he was pulling his bow string drona's shaft came and cut the string the acharya still retaining the smile on his face rained a shower of arrows on arjuna and his horses and chariot arjuna fought back but the acharya showered his arrows that covered arjuna and his chariot in darkness krishna krishna saw things were not going at all well and said partha no more waste of time let us proceed it is no use fighting this brahmana who seems to know no fatigue saying this krishna drove arjuna's chariot to the left of the acharya and proceeded forward stop surely you will not proceed without defeating your enemy said drona you are my guru not my enemy o acharya i am in the position of a son to you there is no one in the wide world that can defeat you said arjuna and they proceeded forward at the swift pace bypassing drona then arjuna pierced the boja army krithavarma and sudakshina who opposed his passage were defeated shruta yuddha also tried to stop arjuna's progress there was a fierce battle in which shruta yuddha lost his horses and he hurled his mace at krishna his mother had obtained this mace as a uh, result of her offering but the condition attached to the boon operated and it came back and struck shruta yuddha himself dead this is the story of the mace parnasa went through penances that pleased varuna and obtained from that god a boon that her son shruta yuddha may not be killed by any enemy i shall give your son a divine weapon let him use it in all his battles no enemy will be able to defeat him or kill him but he should not use the weapon against one who does not fight if he does the weapon will recoil and kill him saying this god varuna gave a mace shruta yuddha when fighting arjuna disregarding the injunction hurled the mace at krishna who was not fighting but was only driving arjuna's chariot the missile hit janardana's chest and immediately rebounded fiercely back to shruta yuddha and like a demon recoiling fatally on the magician that commits an error in uttering the spell of power that holds it in thrall it slew shruta yuddha and lay him dead on the field like a great forest tree blown down by a storm then the king of kamboja led his forces against arjuna after a fierce fight he lay stretched dead on the field like a great flag staff after the festival is over when they saw the strong warriors shruta yuddha and the king of kamboja slain the kaurava force was in great confusion shruta uh, yu and his brother ashruta yu then attacked partha on both sides trying to save the situation and greatly harassed him at one stage of the battle arjuna leaned on the flag staff dazed with the wounds he received but krishna spoke to him encouragingly and arjuna recovered and resumed the fight slaying the two brothers as well as their two sons who continued the struggle arjuna marched on and killing many more warriors successfully made his way to jaitrada